Hello Night fans, Ryan Ulick here for the third installment of Kicking It with Roland. I'm here with men's soccer head coach Seth Roland. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. As always, uh, mine as well. Since we last talked, you went to Illinois for a two-game weekend series uh, in the Lakeside Classic. So let's start with Northern, Northern Illinois. Um, just recap the win for us. Well, I thought we were playing well from the opening whistle. Uh, we were uh, creating the rhythm of the game. Um, kept possession, uh, but then we got caught on the counter and went down one nil. Um, we kept at it and were controlling play, created some opportunities, uh, didn't score at all. Uh, after halftime, we picked up the pace a little bit, um, and then towards middle, towards the like 15 minutes to go in the second half, we scored to tie it, and then with about six minutes to go, uh, got the winner. And Nicholas uh, Walker got the tying goal, and Yusuf Hamza uh, hit a great shot for the winner. So that was fun to come back and, uh, and win out on Northwestern's field against Northern Illinois, mm -hmm. and it was a good win for us. And um, like you said, you controlled the game, uh, the <coughs> tempo for the most part, but you struggled until the 78th, 7th minute when Nick Walker scored that goal. Um, could you? Try to explain maybe why you struggled until the 77th to get the ball in the back and then, and then also walk us through what happened with Nick's goal and Yusuf's goal. Yeah, we, we struggled with scoring, yes. Uh, we didn't struggle with, with keeping right. the ball. Um, you know, we need to, the hardest thing to do is score goals in soccer. And we need to get a little better at creating opportunities and finishing opportunities. Um, Jeffrey Berenicea sent a long ball in, Chami. Uh, challenged the goalkeeper, keeper punched it out, and Nicholas volleyed it in from like Open 16 yards out. Yeah, but he, he ripped it. Nice. And then uh, Simon crossed the ball to Nico, who one touch laid it off to Yusuf, who uh, finished it from 15 yards out. Always nice to see a defender rip a shot from into the 18, right? Um, Okay, let's move on to Northwestern, the title game of uh, the, the two-game tournament. Um, Northwestern, 16th in the country, coming into the weekend, I believe. Um, what happened exactly in the, in the loss? Uh, this was the first time, besides the first half at Albany, this was the first time you were out shot in the half since the first half of the season against Drexel. So what happened? Well, they're a very good team. They're defending Big Ten champs. Um, they're a fellow Sweet 16 NCAA tournament uh, contender like we were last year, and, uh, and they're a very good team. Um, however, I thought we outplayed them first half. Again, we created the tempo, we kept possession. Uh, what we needed to do a little better, even the reason they outshot us is because we had some unforced errors which did give them some opportunities. Um, and we need to do a little better with that. Uh, but I was very pleased with, with how we went out on Northwestern's home field and, and took control of the game first half. After halftime, it was the first time this year we've gone Friday, Sunday, and we were fatigued. And uh, um, they took it to us a bit, uh, second half. Um, got a goal early in the second half, but we answered almost right away. So it was 1-1, and then... Um, the referee made the decision to give a penalty kick, um, and that was the winner for them. Uh, certainly, we were a little tired second half, but we did have some fresh legs, and it was good to get some playing time for some of our reserves because we're going to need them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we need to have competition for positions, and there is competition for positions. And overall, it was a good weekend. You know, things could be worse than than playing on the home field at Northwestern, uh, a team of that caliber, and losing on a penalty kick call. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there were a lot of positives from that game, a lot of positives from the weekend, and uh, we look forward to learning from them and from them and, uh, and getting better. All right, well said. Um, I agree. So all tournament team, uh, Nick Walker, Anders, Martin Lukashik got on uh, the Team, the 11 there. Um, Anders and Lukashik, no points recorded in the two games, but still named to the tournament team. Why, why 
Well, because they, you know, were, were key components of our possession game and our, you know, establishing control and, and establishing uh, the tempo and rhythm of play in both games. All right, and um, come up this weekend, you will travel to Iona, 2 p.m. on Saturday. And then next Tuesday, a very big match against St. John's coming to, to Teaneck. Um, and we will have that broadcast on NEC Front Row, our first of the year. Um, just preview Iona on Saturday and, of course, St. John's. Well, well Iona's a great ball possession team. Um, they're a very, very good team and very dangerous. They keep the ball well, they attack, they can score goals. Um, that's going to be a, a, a tough challenge for us on Saturday, followed by, you know, St. John's, who is in the top 10 or 15 um, nationally. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a rematch of the NCAA tournament game. And uh, of course, you know, we're looking forward to that. But, you know, our only focus right now for the moment is on a very good Iona team. Absolutely, and uh, we are very excited for the St. John game as well. I mean, uh, our first broadcast, I'm pumped up about it. So uh, thank you for sitting down with us this week. The second edition of Kicking with Roland, third installment this season. We'll be back midweek next week to recap Iona and St. John's. Hopefully everything goes well. And to preview the uh, Hall of Fame banquet, we're inducting the 2001 class. Yeah, it was a great yeah. group, our Elite 18, so yeah. we're looking forward to we'll it. We'll talk more about that next week. Thank you, Coach Ron. Right. Good luck this weekend. Thank you.